child poverty is a global crisis. While it's easy to imagine the emotional Feed the Children of Africa commercials, the United States is not immune. As a former educator, I've seen firsthand the negative impacts child poverty has on children. Poverty, it's not just being unable to have trendy clothes or afford the latest gadgets. It's being unable to ensure that your basic needs and expenses are being met. I've seen students come to school tired, hungry, anxious, um, emotionally unstable in general, and sometimes inadequately prepared for the weather, such as not having a winter coat in freezing temperatures of the winter. To be considered poor, children must live in a household with an annual income below the $25,701 poverty line for a family of four in the U.S. As of 2018, the Children's Defund F Defense Fund reports that one in six children live in poverty in the U.S. and that the child poverty rate is 16%, which is almost one and a half times higher than the poverty rate for 18 to 64 year olds in the United States. According to AmericanProgress.org, 7 to 11 million children live in households in which they are unable to eat because of cost. Besides not having basic needs met, such as being able to eat, living in poverty can invoke toxic stress in children, which in turn stunts growth and development. Not only that, but they're more likely to have barriers preventing them from attaining a quality education, they're more likely to perform poorly academically, they're more likely to drop out of high school, they're more likely to um, face unemployment, which leads to economic hardship and insecurity, and then later in life, they're more likely to be involved in the criminal justice system. It may come as no surprise that, much like many social issues, we see an intersection of race and ethnicity with poverty. While the Children's Defense Fund reports that 1 in 11, or approximately 8.9% of white children live in poverty, they report that the child poverty rates for children of color are higher. 30.1% of black children, 29.1% of American Indian and Alaska Native children, and approximately 23.7% of Hispanic children live in poverty in the United States. There are many factors that play a role in poverty, such as being a single parent, joblessness, which leads to economic insecurity, and things such as public health crises like the COVID-19 pandemic. In the U.S., there are programs in place that are supposed to assist families in need. There's the Earned Income Tax Credit, or the EITC, which combined with the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, has helped children approximately 6.1 million children out of poverty, but are these programs doing enough? That's the question. My answer is unfortunately no. Um, the childhood poverty issue persists globally and in the United States. Raising the federal minimum wage is necessary to help end child poverty. We could expand current programs and government assistance. However, raising the minimum wage could lift approximately 500,000 children out of poverty, according to a 2019 congressional budget analysis. Doing so could then lead to a decline in governmental spending on assistant programs like SNAP. Increasing the minimum wage also increases annual family income for low-wage families, <coughs> which helps ensure that children are getting basic needs met and lead to better outcomes later in life. As social workers, we are committed to fighting social injustice and we must consider the disadvantages faced by children in poverty, such as um, access to nutritious food, quality education, and medical care, which they don't get uh, or may struggle to get. With children being the future, we cannot deny them their basic rights.